the city of freedom. So long as we can both share fond memories, it doesn't matter. Let the heart decide. <laughs> she saw what eternity means in the eyes of the world. That guy enters the fray. The competition is heating up. I'm honored to be here on the <laughs> Happy <Lantern laughs> Run! I came here several times with my father when I was little, but stopped eating here as often after growing up. I hope the food here will be to your taste. Oh, don't worry. We haven't eaten at a hotel like this in a while. <laughs> Paimon's getting excited already. Oh, in that case, I'll go order for us first. Please wait here a moment. Ooh, everything looks so good. People in Fontaine sure know how to enjoy life. Why, of course. Go ahead, try whatever you like. If the food's good, I'll make a group reservation for the rest of Spina di Rosula next time. And if it's not? Well, uh, <laughs> then I'll still bring everyone. Albeit with only one dish per table. You sure have your own way of doing things. Oh, we called this a farewell meal, but we could also treat it like a victory feast, right? We did just win that case after all. Oh, true. Very true. In that case, boss, we'll have another two dishes. Huh. Paimon didn't mean that you had to order even more food. <laughs> Speaking of cases, do you think that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances will get caught soon now that this has all happened? Well, we've certainly taken a big step forward, but I feel that's about it. We know that there's an organization that means to dissolve these young women, but we still don't know what they are really after. If it hadn't happened right in front of us, Paimon wouldn't have ever believed that a person could be dissolved like that. <laughs> right? Yet it was because this was such a preposterous notion that the investigation could never really move forward before. Ugh. If only that guy could have finished speaking! We were so close to hearing who was behind it. In such investigations, even the smallest step can seem like a yawning chasm if the trail of clues is cut off. To be honest, I don't have high hopes for any follow-up that the authorities might conduct. It's not that I don't have faith in their ability, it's just that a different perspective is required in some matters. It's easy to guard against and deceive a single, narrow perspective. A shift in thinking is required at such times in order to produce a breakthrough, which is exactly why the Spina di Rosula exists. Those highfalutin folk are not all-knowing. That's why we exist, to seep into the cracks where filth falls through, where their watch fails them. That's the kind of problems we solve. Hmm. Seems Paimon thought things were simpler than they actually are. <sighs> it's all right. Well, <laughs> this was supposed to be a farewell meal, so I doubt you have further interest in this business, right? Let's talk about something else. Like, uh, what are your future plans? That's true. We didn't have a chance to speak to her after the trial ended. It didn't really seem like the right time or place to do it anyway. <laughs> So, your primary objective, which has been foiled so far, was to have a chat with the Hydro Archon. I've heard that there's a long line of people waiting to meet Lady Farina. I suspect you'll be waiting for quite a while, considering that you missed your chance today. Hello and good evening, Chan mates, and of course to my fellow travelers, and welcome to another episode of Genshin tonight. And what are you seeing right now is the continuation of the story quest following the um, conclusion of the trial of Linny and Lynette after they were already proven as innocent. And as you can see here, um, fellow travelers, that the traveler and Paimon had already. Um, it's um, so-called victory well, treat one way with would be to Navia. infiltrate a performance troupe at the opera house, only to abandon your act at the place climax and ask to speak to her after the performance. I'm sure Lady Farina would be eager to see the ending, and would agree in order to finish watching the play. Don't you think? Uh, could you suggest something a little more practical? This plan seems pretty hard to pull off. We'd have 
practical learn how to act, and acting's really hard! <sighs> Alright, here's another. Find a way to conceal yourselves under her bed. Then, wake her up in the dead of night and demand answers. Don't let her go back to sleep until she answers all your questions. I can personally testify that this one works. When I'm sleepy, I'll do anything as long as I can finally get some sleep. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. work, but that's not really the problem. The problem is we don't want to get ourselves arrested. Ah, valid point. I overlooked that part. I was just thinking about leveraging a person's desire for sleep. <laughs> yeah, right, how could you right, overlook? No more joking around. Huh. Perhaps you could. Oh, I don't know. Cut the line when she's on a break. You did defeat her in court, clearing citizens of hers from false accusations. False accusations she had nearly upheld personally. I imagine that she feels quite ashamed about the whole thing. You mean that if we catch her while she's on a break, she might be too embarrassed to refuse? Oh, that does make some sense. Why don't we give it a try after this meal? You know, strike while the iron is hot and all. Huh? Paimon, did you drink my Fanta? Uh, was this your drink? <laughs> Sorry about that. Paimon wasn't really paying attention and the cup was right next to me. No, ka, Paimon. Bantai like ka. No, it's fine. We're just about done here. Alright. Honestly, Paimon wouldn't recommend Fanta anyway. It tastes kind of salty and icky. Is that so? Huh. Well, in that case, we'll have to blacklist the Fanta here then. If we're all finished eating, then I'll go pay. Yeah, we're stuck. Oh, wow. Thanks for the treat, Navia. <laughs> yep, you're welcome. Oh, so full. I'm not gonna barely float anymore. Nah, that would be so... normal. You know, like you. Hmm. Okay, as for expenses this month, we're left with... Hey, Navia! What are you doing over there? Oh, nothing, nothing. It was just a meal, you know? Nothing the Spina di Rosula can't cover. <laughs> <sighs> Let's get ready to try to meet the Hydro Archon again. Bye, Navia! Ready to meet Farina? So this is goodbye, huh? Huh? Well, if you do encounter any other trouble in Fontaine, you're always welcome to contact the Spina di Rosula. I'll give your requests the highest priority. Nice. Uh, in any case, I wish you smooth sailing. <laughs> wow! Partner. Howdy, howdy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> What? Hmm. Here Looks comes like another talking again. fountain. Huh? Traveler? Yikes. Are you hearing voices again? And Ugh. it's when I come back in the even morning? uh clearer Vashay? this time. Vashay. Hey! Why are you still walking towards it? There might be something nasty in the water. Huh? Hang on. Hyman can kinda hear a voice. It's calling for. Vashay, right? Hey, traveler, stop walking. Come no. On, stop. Yikes. Are you okay, traveler? Oh, <sighs> the oceanid. Vashay, where is this? <gasps> my dear Vashay. No, wait. You seem to be someone else. Wow. No, Vashay. You know where my love is. I'm... Wait... Who am I? Oh, yikes. I'm very sorry, I fear I do not know. My memories feel like they've okay. been washed away like a flood. So many fragments dissolved amidst the tide, never to be recovered. How much have I lost? How many things that I once held dear while on land have I since forgotten? Yes, that is what I was once. But now, I am but the consciousness of one who has lost their form. I do not know how I came to be like this either. I only vaguely remember being covered in light blue water. 
and it all grew dim. I also remember going to many places. I loved adventure, loved exploring places of peril. And no matter where I went, Vache would go with me. I knew how dearly he loved me. And I also loved him equally as much. But now, we can no longer go back. The pain of such parting. I never knew how heavy it could be. Aww. No, our reunion no longer has any meaning. There is no way for us to create any new memories. The thought of me gives him no succor. So let it lie forgotten beneath the waters. If you meet Vashe, tell him not to look for me. Tell him to move on. That is the only thing I still remember. Perhaps that is so, as I was submerged in the waters, losing consciousness. I saw Vache above the surface. His eyes were filled with such sorrow, such longing. If only I could have comforted him, told him that I did not suffer. Indeed, I had felt a great warmth. Is that what you call it? Dissolving. If anything, I consider it a form of release. It was a state of neither fear nor frenzy, with only an endless peace, like the water still surface. I could also liken it to being a thirsty person who drinks water for the first time, and only then sees how they have lived for so long in a world of endless want and anxiety. I think I hear your companion. It's time for you to go, I think. Farewell, then. I am glad that you were able to sense my presence. Remember, if you see Vache, tell him not to seek me out any longer. Oh! Oh! Here comes the Great War! Here comes the war! Dear God, it's a whole army of Gardamex! This is one big yikes! You're right. Our hand. <laughs> I have lost four words. Now's our chance. Here comes Goride in action. <laughs> Navia and Goride fighting side by side. And what now? What now? I should thank you for lending us your sword there, Clorand. But before I do so, could you explain how you managed to show up here? I... followed you. It seemed to me that danger has followed you more closely as of late. I believe that following someone without their knowledge is actually called stalking, is it not? Mr. Callus' last wish was for me to ensure your safety, and I will not betray his trust. 
He would do the same, were he alive today. Do not speak of my father! Sorry, demoiselle. I was not strong enough. Thank you for your aid, Miss Clorand, but do keep an eye out for your manner of speech. I believe we all wish to avoid unnecessary emotional harm. Sorry, I... did not consider your feelings. Whatever. What else do you know? How did you come to the conclusion that I'd be in grave danger? I doubt I know much more than you. But I believe that the mastermind behind the serial disappearances is very powerful. Your performance tonight will almost certainly attract their attention. Huh. I'm sure they've known about me. To be honest, I'm shocked it's taken them this long to act against me. And what about these Gardamax? I thought only those associated with the Maison Guardianage could control them. None of these mecha have serial numbers. I was sure to check a moment ago. They are not the ones used by the authorities to enforce the law. I can only conclude that some powerful or wealthy party must have obtained them via illegal means, deploying them as a private force of sorts. What? Your point being that they're out of Spina di Rosula's league, then? Yes. Be careful, and do not act rashly. I will continue investigating, no matter what. We will bring the truth to light. That's my father's true last wish. <laughs> Regardless, thank you for your help today, Clarand. But if you get any ideas, tell me first. I don't much appreciate being followed. I do not think that they'll strike again anytime soon. So I shall stop following you. Good day, all. Right. I suppose that's the best news we've gotten today. Demoiselle, I believe that Miss Clorand was being sincere with you. If we tried, we could attempt to thaw relations a little. I know, I just... She's... Ugh. Oh, thank goodness! Paimon thought we were done for! Those Gardamex came out of nowhere while you were unconscious, and Nadia and her gang saved us! Oh, and there was that champion duelist named Clorin who came out to save us too! We got lucky there. Paimon probably couldn't have fought them off otherwise. Oh, <laughs> come now. Forget all that polite talk. That wasn't really a farewell meal we had back there. Not for me, anyway. In truth, I hope that every meal we have together shall be a victory feast. As such, we're still partners. There's no need to thank me. It will take 50 years for me to match Demoiselle's magnanimity. If it were me, I would have joined the Spina di Rosula on account of her goodwill long ago. <laughs> All right, you two. That's enough. Actually, Navia, how did you know that we were in danger? You sure did show up in the nick of time. Well, to be honest, you're the one who tipped us off, Paimon. Huh? Really? Paimon contributed somehow? Ooh, Paimon's even more amazing than she thought! Yes, all thanks to you grabbing my drink by mistake. Uh, how did that help? After we parted ways, I was on the way back to one of our bases, when I suddenly thought of what you said. That the Fanta tasted kind of salty and icky? Fanta only comes in sweet flavors. So how could it have tasted salty? The color of the drink, if I recall, had also been a bit off. So the Fanta had been spiked with water from the Primordial Sea? Yes. So if you hadn't drunk that cup for me... Spina di Rosula is preparing the grandest of awards for you as we speak for saving the boss. Huh? Really? I sent people to Hotel de Boer to investigate. But whoever did this left no trace at all. That's when I figured out that you might be in danger and hurried here as quickly as I could. What? Why would they go after us too? All we did was defend Linny in court and help clear his name! Ugh, now we're caught up in this mess too, aren't we? Well, you did foil a plan that they were probably pretty proud of and almost got their name in the process. Speaking of which, did anything strange happen when you drank the primordial seawater? Well, it can't be a coincidence that the Traveler fainted just now. He said that he heard that voice calling for Vashe again. Oh, and this time Paimon heard it too! But it was real faint. Does this situation have to do with the Primordial?
primordial seawater then? Does that mean the primordial seawater raises someone's sensitivity to hydro when it's used on people who are not from Fontaine? That doesn't sound like too much of a bad thing, to be honest. New intel? While you were out cold? Ah, uh, well, let's hear it, shall we? Oh, that is important. Vache, that name doesn't ring a bell. I suppose he hasn't stepped forward as a witness in court lately. Since he saw that young woman dissolve, he was at least at the crime scene. But he never gave testimony or any information regarding people dissolving in the primordial seawater. Could he have been... threatened? Yes, thank you. This is very important information indeed. We will continue to investigate. Oh, you mean you'll help us investigate? Well, you did say that our farewell meal didn't really count. That means we're still partners, right? And besides, we're in this now whether we like it or not. You're not gonna let those people who targeted us get off the hook so easily, are you, Traveler? Demoiselle, do try not to look quite so pleased. You are the face of Spina di Rosula, after all. <coughs> you talk too much. <sighs> well, in that case, let's head back to one of our bases, shall we? I'll arrange accommodations for you. We also have some plans to go over, and hopefully we can deepen our bonds as partners. But we'll take that one step at a time, I guess. Don't worry, you two. With us around, our base is definitely secure. Of course. But, um, right anyways. <laughs> Let's make sure we weren't followed first. I've been keeping watch right. myself. I haven't spotted anyone suspicious thus far. Huh. Very good. Okay. But let's not let our guard down for now. I shall find rooms for our respected guests. Thank you, Malus. Now, let's continue, Traveler. So, uh, this is your base? It's not quite what Paimon imagined. Your accommodations have been arranged. Under the present circumstances, I can confidently say it's the best we have. <laughs> Well, our funds have been a little tight lately. After all, we don't allow illegal or unethical profiteering. In fact, our funds often come from citizenry who support us. Seems like it's tough times for everyone. But if you have the support of the people, that does sound like it's worth it. <sighs> to be honest, our financial situation was a lot better back when my father was in charge a few years ago. <sighs> I'm afraid I'm not quite his equal. Your father... He was the previous boss of Spina di Rosula, right? How did he... Demoiselle, if you'll allow me to explain. Uh, no. I I'll explain it myself. I suppose I couldn't run from this topic forever. And as partners, this is something I hope they can understand. My father's name is Callus. Yes. The same one they call Callus the Unfaithful in the streets. Three years ago, he was accused of murdering his own friend. He chose a duel to defend his honor instead of standing trial. He died in the duelist's ring. Oh no. But I do not believe my father was a murderer. I'm sure he was set up. At the time, I believed that if he only stood trial and was duly investigated, something amiss would crop up and prove his innocence. But strangely, he not only requested the duel himself, but rumor has it that even after being seriously injured to the point where he could be deemed as having lost the duel, he refused to surrender, determined to die in the arena. <laughs> Three years later, I still don't understand why he did that. How could he protect his honor if he's dead? <laughs> if anything, he gave up his chance to defend himself. The closest piece of info I have is that my father had been investigating the serial disappearances case at the time of his death. Ah, so that's why you're so determined to get to the bottom of that case. That's right. I've also tried to investigate the murder my father was implicated in. But I haven't found a single new clue in my countless reviews of the investigation records. However, I believe that if the murder case is related to those behind the disappearances... It's right up ahead, but... 
Let's make sure we weren't followed first. I've been keeping watch, Demoiselle. I haven't spotted anyone suspicious thus far. However, I believe that if the murder case is related to those behind the disappearances, they must know something. I must know what really happened. Was my father coerced? Framed? Even if he really did kill his friend, I must get to the truth. <sighs> if only he'd been more open with me when he was still alive. He even hid the fact that my mother died due to complications when giving birth to me. And now, here I am investigating his death. <laughs> you really are a handful, aren't you, Papa? Demoiselle, please. If there is anything I can do, anything at all. I also will never believe that Master Callus murdered anyone. There are none whom I respect more than the two of you, Demoiselle. Master Callus did so much good in life, yet all it took was one murder case for him to be dubbed Callus the Unfaithful. Even our supporters decreased greatly due to that incident, hence our strained finances at present. Wait! If Callus was such a good man, wouldn't people at least be a little suspicious when he was accused? Uh, no. Perhaps people just revel in that kind of drama. It's not something exclusive to people from Fontaine, really. Everyone's like that. People love watching the evil turn over a new leaf, but they also enjoy watching good people fall into an abyss from one slip-up just as much. But how could... Ugh, never mind. If Callus was really falsely accused, we have to find the truth. He didn't deserve to have that happen to him. And there is one other thing. Master Callus' opponent in the duel was Ms. Corand. Oh, her? Well, then, isn't that as good as saying that she was the one who killed him? Yeah, that's not the sort of thing that you can just let go and move on from. Ms. Corand has always placed great emphasis on the honorable nature of the duel. If her opponent doesn't yield, she will not stop either. She knew Master Callus beforehand and greatly respected him, but seeing how he was resolute in the arena, there was only ever one choice she could have made. It's not that I don't understand her at all, but I... I just can't deal with this yet. Don't worry, Navia. Paimon knows how you feel. You don't have to force yourself to do that. Afterward, Ms. Coran told us that at the start of the duel, Master Callus requested that she ensure Demoiselle Navia's safety. Yes, that is our understanding as well. <sighs> oh, Papa. What madness drove you to ask the person who killed you to take care of me? All right, anyway, that's the information I wanted to share with you. Even if it did sound like I was just complaining towards the end. Uh, thanks. You two should go and rest. This was quite a day after all. Yeah! I want to eat. Please, relax and get some sleep. We will ensure you rest soundly. Going to the peaceful night that passes, <laughs> and so we just woke well. up. <sighs> this place feels almost too safe. Huh? Nadia? Where did the other two go? I sent them back to Poisson. It's Spina de Rosula's place of origin, and where we have our headquarters. There's not much for them to do here at the moment. Paimon gets the feeling that you're just trying to get them off your back. But never mind that. When did you get back? Were you waiting here the whole time? No, I just returned after going out for a while. I did some investigating yesterday regarding the name Vache. Wait, so you didn't sleep at all? <laughs> How could I after having such critical new evidence appear? Uh, guess Paima wasn't speaking for everyone just now, huh? <sighs> Unfortunately, this name seems to have been wiped from existence. It doesn't seem to have a match anywhere. I suspect that those behind this have already taken steps to hinder an investigation from this angle. But, 
That does prove that this Fashe person is a key witness in the incident. Does that mean we're too late, though? No. There is one ray of hope. One place in Fontaine that they would find almost impossible to threaten. No matter how much they wanted to. And that is the archives kept by Chief Justice Nouvellet. A place where detailed files on all the cases in recent years are kept. If the Oceanet you met is one of the young women who went missing recently, we should be able to find some related information there. So Nervalette maintains an archive of case files? Whew, guess that's the hard-working Chief Justice for you. In that case, let's go talk to him, shall we? Um... Hmm? Aren't you coming along, Navia? Did you get Wait, tired? Wait, what is it? <laughs> uh, no, it's nothing. Let's go see the Honorable Chief Justice. Okay, um, you don't have to push yourself, Navia. You don't have to push yourself. Hold! Please state your business here. The Chief Justice is presently occupied with official matters. Huh. This place does look pretty heavily guarded. You recognize us? Huh? Who are you? Just to be clear, <clears throat> I don't care who you are or who you might be related to, our rules make no exceptions. See? They've got great discipline, too. Yep, yep. Pyron can tell. If you're here just to crack jokes, I can point you towards the exit. Unlike some, we're busy, so please leave if you don't have a reason to be here. Uh, no, no. What I meant to say is... Shouldn't you remember us from a few days ago? We were at the trial of the great magician Linny. Oh, oh yes, I remember. I read about it in the Steambird. You, you must be Linny's attorneys. It's all coming back to me now. We're here today to report and archive some information on a follow-up case. Huh, is that even a thing? Of course. Don't worry, we're here on official business. You can trust us. All right, then, I'll let you through. The Chief Justice is just inside. Ah, oh, thanks so much. Um, sorry to barge in, Monsieur Nervalette. We only lied to get in because we didn't know any other way. It's all right. Please let me know how I may be of assistance to you. Uh... So you're not mad at us? We are looking for a man called Vache. He may have been an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. If we can find him, we may be able to unearth some key information on the case. Ah, oh, I see. In that case, please wait here a moment while I browse through the files. Who knew that Nervalette would be so easy to talk to? Fortunately, I'm quite certain that no one by the name of Vache has been involved in any case, criminal or civil, in the past several years. There are no records of him either in the files or in my memory. Traveler? What if it was really just a dream? Is that so? All right then. Thank you so much, Monsieur Neuvillette. We'll take our leave now. Ahem. <clears throat> Miss Navia, I can understand how you feel. Your father, Callus, was a truly exceptional man. We deeply regret his passing. Hmm. And what are you trying to say, Monsieur Neuvillette? Are you trying to console me? Extend your sympathy? Or just express some tendril of regret? No. You are not trying to do any of that. I can hear it in your voice. There's no emotion behind your words. You only said those things because you felt like you should. It's just like last time. After my father took his place in the duelist ring, I pushed through the guards to talk to you as a last resort. 
You even told me then that you thought there was something fishy with the case, yet you still allowed the duel to go ahead. In your eyes, the value of a human life is nothing compared to those cold laws you hold so dear. If you truly regret my father's death, then why didn't you call a stop to the duel? Why didn't you give me the power to stop him from throwing his life away? Why did you just let him die, despised and hated by all? Everything was hanging on a thread at that moment. Just the tiniest effort could have changed everything. There are still so many things I never got to tell him. So many questions he still owes me answers to. If you really have no heart, then just look me in the eyes. I, Navia, will show you the true meaning of regret. <sighs> I'm sorry, Miss Navia. You and my father are truly alike. You keep all kinds of things in your heart and never say a word to anyone. It's not so much that you can't feel, but that you would never express anything. Oh well. In any case, everyone already knows full well the apathy of the Chief Justice. My apologies for taking my emotions out on you, Monsieur Chief Justice. Let's go, Traveler and Paimon. Navia, are you okay? I'm fine. <sighs> Rain. It's raining. You're right. Wasn't it still sunny when we went into the building? And there shouldn't be any active trials today. How strange. Now that I think of it, on the day my father was convicted of murder, it was also raining. What is it? Did you think of something? Yeah, he was outside. It was uncovered and the rain could fall there. Why? Do you think the rain could have affected the crime scene? That thought has occurred to us before. We've even expanded the search area to try to account for that. But didn't find anything of value. Oh? Wait. Uh, you don't mean... So you're saying that the true murderer could have been turned into water? And then got washed away with the rain? Yeah! And if that's what had happened... Then no one would have believed your dad, even if he explained what he saw to the authorities! I really think I found a true genius for a partner. <laughs> You're completely right! How did I not connect the dots earlier? Alright, let's go to Poisson. With this new lead in mind, we'll get to the bottom of my father's case for sure! Yeah! We're gonna make progress for sure this time! Do you want to go with me now? Or do you want to head over by yourself later? Great! Let's go then! Whoa! What a huge ship! Why would a ship be anchored at a place like this? <laughs> There's no need to be so surprised. While it may look like a ship, it's actually Spina di Rosula's headquarters. My father was the one who asked for it to be built like this. Perhaps our taste in exterior design is the only thing we occasionally had in common. A gigantic and glamorous ship embodies discovery, opportunity, ambition, and conquest. It symbolizes Spina di Rosula's bright and limitless future. And Paimon thought you were bluffing when you said Spina di Rosula had a glorious past! Paimon was confused why a group with such a history would live in the sewers! But now that Paimon has seen this ship for herself, she's been convinced! Well... Poisson is where Spina di Rosula began, after all. It's our main base. Our home. Melus, we're back! Apologies for the wait, demoiselle, and our most important partners. You said before that you still had some business at the court. What brings you back to Poisson so quickly? Uh, about that. It's because my partner here reminded me of something really important. You see, what if my father's case had something to do with water from the Primordial Sea? You still remember, right, Belus? On that night, it was raining? 
Yes, the case was quite similar to that of Mr. Linney's. Both were what you'd call impossible murders. Could you tell us a bit more about what happened before? Yeah, of course. Many years ago, something called synth began to gain popularity in Poisson. At a glance, it was a kind of drink that could excite your mood and produce many pleasant hallucinations. Wait! Didn't that guard guy who turned into water also mention that the primordial water could be used to produce some kind of potion? Yes, he did. Considering what we know now, it's almost certain that synth is created using water from the primordial sea. If you drink synth for an extended amount of time, you'll suffer many side effects, such as losing the ability to focus or control your emotions. And if you were to stop drinking it completely, you'll experience flashes of paranoia and anxiety while lacking energy to do anything. It's an extremely dangerous substance. As he oversaw Poisson, my father was compelled to put a stop to synth abuse and called for a complete ban of it. Boss's uncompromising attitude incurred the synth vendor's wrath, but no matter how much they threatened or bribed him, he refused to yield. Not only that, Boss became determined to find the mastermind behind the synth operation and put an end to the problem once and for all. Yes, but the enemy was very cunning, <laughs> so he could never get anything out of the dealers all of whom only sold the stuff and weren't privy to the rest of the operation. Recognizing that, my father decided to contact the dealers in secret and cultivate personal relationships with them. Finally, he was able to convince someone to become his informant. The man's name was Jacques. He felt greatly ashamed about his work after seeing many families destroyed by synth abuse. That night, my father hosted a banquet at his countryside estate, he planned to meet up and exchange information with Jacques over some food. But then, we heard two gunshots from the courtyard. We raced to the scene and found my father, still holding a gun, and Jacques, who was already dead on the ground. Huh? How did that happen? Aren't they on the same side? Sounds just like Lenny's case, doesn't it? In both cases, the culprit seemed obvious but neither appeared to have any motive at all. Looking back on it, though, I now believe the most important clue was something we all overlooked at the time. There were pieces of clothing left at the scene. Precisely. It's all thanks to you that I made the connection now. Back then, we all just thought they were some costumes that Jacques used to disguise himself at the banquet. But, considering it now, it's almost certain that they belong to a third person at the scene, with one extra person, we'll also need to reconsider why the two shots were fired. You're right. We still don't know what happened. But my intuition tells me that we're on the right track to figuring it all out. I'm finally headed towards the truth. Jacques was an empathetic man who was infinitely remorseful for his past actions. It's unlikely that he turned on boss with zero warning. I think this third person is probably the key to the full truth. On that note, however, even though this will not please you, demoiselle, as you're and your father's butler, I must still offer a word of warning. Our opponent is insidious and cruel. They are extremely difficult to deal with, and Boss has already lost his life trying to bring them to justice. Even though Spina de Rosula has lost most of its former glory, Poisson has welcomed a new time of peace, and we have been allowed to live out our lives. There is no need to follow your father's path. It would be both wise and in line with Boss's wishes to step back and give up on the case. If that's indeed what he wished for, then he should have told me that himself. Was I not the closest person to him? And yet, I was the one most kept in the dark. What was the point of him dying without sharing any of the secrets he knew? Did he manage to protect anything in the end? Synth is still here. Callus the Unfaithful is still his epithet. And Spina di Rosula is barely getting by. Nothing has changed. Did he think I'd just accept his meaningless death? and live out my life just as meaninglessly? I've never accepted that, ever. 
Not since that day, and certainly not now. I want to find out the real answer for everyone's sake. For the missing girls, for the victims, and for myself. Navia. This is indeed the best moment to act. Your partner appears to be quite reliable, and more importantly, Demoiselle, I think you're also ready to take this on. So you do know something else, Malus. Yes, I do. In fact, even before that banquet, Boss already knew of the connection between Synth and the Serial Disappearances case. But what drove all the tensions to the boiling point was the revelation that you, Demoiselle, had been selected as the next target to disappear. What? <sighs> Boss also didn't tell you that he had been diagnosed with a rare illness. The doctors told him that he had no more than five years left to live. And the serial disappearances case caused him great anxiety. Five years was nowhere near enough time to resolve this long-standing conflict. But once he passed away, all the danger would pass on to you. Knowing all of this, he decided to use one final intimidation tactic before his death. He claimed to have already gotten his hands on some key incriminating evidence for the other side, and even told some members of Spina de Rosula about the details. But as long as you remained safe, he would not share the evidence with the public. If something were to happen to you, then he and all those he told would immediately expose all they knew about Synth and the disappeared victims. Right, so nobody would be able to get off scot-free. As we've seen, Boss's tactic has worked. Even though Boss has been gone for a long time, the other side has not tried to take Demoiselle's life. No, I don't believe it. He never appeared to look sick to me. No father wants their daughter to see them weak and haggard, especially someone as proud as Boss. To him, dying in a duel and suffering lasting dishonor as the unfaithful was still far preferable than losing face in front of his daughter. <laughs> so he chose to die in silence, so that he could protect me. I'm afraid you're not understanding this correctly, Demoiselle. What Boss wanted to hand to you was not a parasol, but a sword. If Boss's spirit could hear you telling me that you want to find the answer for the sake of everyone involved, I'm sure he'd be extremely proud. Uh, that fool. <laughs> Couldn't he have just given it to me straight? No. He might have set up everything precisely because he never thought I'd be able to understand him. Is that the amount of confidence he had in me? And what if I was never able to make it to where I am now? Yeah. I suppose that's true. With the way he'd set things up, if I had wanted, I could have just lived out my life without a care in the world. But thankfully, he rarely talked to me about complex matters, and thus understood little of me as a person. In this case, he really didn't need to give me an easy way out. Huh. Malus. What was the key evidence that he shared with you? It's the location where Synth is produced. Essentially, it's the enemy's headquarters. When he was threatening the enemy, Boss didn't share the specifics of the incriminating evidence he found. But if you want to use it against the enemy, you'll still have to take several things into consideration. Why? If we know where the place is, can't we just go storming in? You mustn't forget that we're fighting against a mysterious and dangerous organization that's been in operation for decades. There's no telling what might be lying in wait at their headquarters. We also have no idea what kind of evidence we may be able to find inside, nor what people we may be able to capture. But a single visit to their headquarters would be tantamount to a formal declaration of war. The worst case would be that we leave empty-handed, but also open ourselves up to full retaliation. Then, in that case, why not work with the Fontaine authorities? Well, you saw one of them dissolve during Mr. Linney's case. 
We have no idea just how thoroughly they may have been infiltrated. Huh. That's true. Seems my father really had no choice. But things are different now. It should be a lot easier to prove the other side's guilt, now that we've connected Synth with the Disappearances case. You sound like you've put a lot of thought into this, Malus. I am the butler, after all. I live but to serve the boss and Demoiselle's will. I've always been willing to take on any kind of risk for your sake. But considering my relative lack of ability, I've spent my time keeping secrets, performing basic investigations, and waiting for the right time to come. Thank you for all of that, Malus. Have you discovered anything new in the past few years? Let me think. One conclusion I came to is that the enemy must be quite familiar with Spina di Rosula, or at least have an informant planted here. When I announced orders to the organization's members on Demoiselle's behalf, I used to deliberately keep a few people in the dark and observe the reactions of the synth vendors. If the vendors didn't change their plans, then the individuals informed of our orders must be innocent. If the vendors packed up and fled, however, then someone must have given them the news. After several rounds of testing and investigative tracing, I've narrowed the suspect list down to three people. The first is Florent, Spina de Rosula's senior advisor. Huh? Florent? Yes, surprising, isn't it? He was one of the people Boss trusted the most, which also means that he was someone who understood Boss really well. Thanks to his position within Boss's innermost circle, he always knew our upcoming plans and could thus avoid capture this whole time. There's someone else like him too. Marcel, the head of Confrérie of Cabriere. Uncle Marcel. It's a guild in Poisson. A boss helped it to grow to its current size and prominence. In the beginning, they were only reselling some daily goods, but now they're one of the richest guilds around with a lot of business connections in the city. So, they're like a sister organization of Spina di Rosula? Wow. Yes, you can say that. When we were fighting against the synth dealers, they provided okay. us with plenty of support. It's... A bit difficult to imagine someone using the suspect is Thierry. Sorry. The man responsible for coordinating information between Spina di Rosula and the guards. Although the guards mostly leave us to our own devices, there are still many activities we have to report to the local authorities. Since Thierry is always in the know about our current activities, he could theoretically always plan one step ahead. I see. These? are all people who I communicate with quite regularly. To think that the enemy we've been fighting against has been right next to me all along, among those I trust the most. It's almost too hard to believe. If you want to investigate them, please take every precaution to not alert the quarry. Judging from our experience, the enemy is extremely cautious. Mm, of course. And thank you, Malus. You've provided us with a lot of great information. You're too kind, my lady. I'm just doing my duty. All right. And, and before I <laughs> As forget, if, uh, you're just doing your duty. Innocence would and that will be it for uh, of this episode of Genshin death. tonight. Storytelling from the world of the bat continues as we explore and witness every story care. counts across they seven nations. This has been Chanushino, your if fellow traveler, help, saying you thanks for watching and goodbye, everyone. Oh, thank you A new case awaits, my dear partner. I hope we can work together to uncover the truth and end this case once and for all.